Hello there and welcome. In this series we're going to create a 3D survival game in Unity. So this series is meant for people that already have some experience in Unity and in coding. It will be a little bit fast paced. So if you're a beginner it's not the best tutorial for you. You can always learn things but again you will have a lot of questions so you better go and study the basics first and then join this tutorial. So I assume that we already have Unity installed. We're going to create a new project. So let's create a 3D project. Let's call it 3D survival game. Again, you can call it whatever you want. So the first thing we want in our game is to create the player and then we can start also adding the environment and everything else. So in order to create a player, let's just create the terrain first so he will be able to step on something. So we go to 3D object, terrain, and we can see that we have a terrain. Right now we're not going to touch this terrain. The next thing we want is to create an empty object. We're going to call it player. And inside of it, we're going to, let's just move it here so it will be in front of us. And inside we're going to create a cylinder. We're going to make it a bit wider and taller something like that. We want to make sure that it's really in the middle of the player parent. And we're going to get rid of this capsule collider because on our player object, we're going to add a character controller. And we're going to use this component to actually move and do whatever we want with this player. So it also, works as a collider so we don't need the capsule collider okay another thing i want to change the radius a little bit because you can see this green uh, outline i want it to actually be the size of the cylinder so 0 0.6 something like 3.8 a little bit less than that seven so now you can see that actually goes around this capsule okay the next thing we want to do is deal with the camera so usually in survival games we can make it a first person game we can make it a third person game i personally prefer first person games it's uh, it feels uh, more immersive it feels more i don't know i think that's the way to go with a survival game if you really don't like first person games and you want your game to be third person, you can find a tutorial that focuses on that. You can still use some of the things we're going to learn, but we're going to go with the first person. So in order to achieve that effect, we're going to take the main camera and drag it on the player. And we're going to reset the position and then we're going to put it at the top of the cylinder because usually the head of the person is up here. I hope so. So we can see that it's like we're looking out of his eyes, right? So if we're going to play it, we can see that we're actually standing elevated like two meters or something like that, right? But right now we can't move. And this is just the beginning. So in order to actually move our player and give it its basic movements, we need to write some code. So in this series, some of the code I'm going to write with you and some of the code I will provide you beforehand. So if you look down in the description under the video, I provided two links to Pastebin with two scripts for the character movement. 
So all we're going to do is go here to the assets folder. We're going to create a new folder, call it scripts. And inside we're going to create a script called mouse movement and player movement. Okay, let's open both of them in Visual Studio. So we have both of them opened up and now we can go to the links that I provided and you're going to see these two files here. So all you need to do is just copy the content and paste it inside our code. So the right way to do it is just copy all the code that is inside of the class because we already have this part. We're going to copy all of this up until this last bracket. Copy. And this is the mouse movement. So here, let's go to the mouse movement and let's paste it inside. Again, it needs to be inside the class. So inside the brackets, let's delete that and paste the code. Okay, let's save it. And let's do the same thing with the player movement. Let's copy the code. And we have this entire code. Don't worry if you think that, oh man, what now? I'm going to just get all of the code and I don't really understand what's going on. No, I will explain you everything that is going on. You will understand every line of code. Don't worry. I just don't want to waste time writing everything from scratch. And later on, we're also going to add more code to these scripts. But that's the way I want to do it with these first scripts so we don't waste time okay so now we have both of these scripts here we make sure that we save them let's go back into our project and all we want to do is take both of these scripts and just drag it on our player okay so now we can see that we have all kinds of variables and values we have some references that are empty that we need to provide and that's okay we're going to do all of that so let's go into the code and understand what is going on. So the first thing we want to do is to actually look around. We want to move our mouse left and right, up and down. So the player will actually look around. So that's why we have the mouse movement script. In the mouse movement script, we have a few variables. We have a public float mouse sensitivity. So we set it to 100. I think it's too low. Maybe you're going to have to make it bigger but again it's public so you can always change it in the inspector according to your needs but the default value will be 100 then we have a float that is the x rotation and a float that is the y rotation so these two floats are controlling the rotation around the x axis and the y axis okay so the x rotation means that we're rotating around the x-axis. This red line here is the x-axis, right? So we want to rotate around him. So if we take our mouse up in the game, we're going to look up. So we're going to rotate the player around the x-axis up. And the same thing when we look down, we want to rotate him around the x-axis and look down. And then it's the same thing with the Y rotation. We have this green arrow, which is the Y axis. So we want to rotate around the Y axis. So he will look left and right when we move the mouse left and right. So these are these two variables that will help us change the rotation. In the start method for now, we only have a line of code that basically says cursor dot lock state equals to cursor lock mode dot locked. So we can see that if we hover over this one, it says how the cursor should behave. And then here it says lock cursor to the center of the game window. 
So that's exactly what we did. We locked the cursor to the center of the screen. So if we run the game, the cursor will be in the middle. We can just move it around and it's also invisible because we don't want to see a cursor in a survival game, right? Maybe in the menu or when we have the inventory, but not when we walk around. So that's what we did here. We also have some commenting that I provided if you ever forget it. So in the update method, we have this code here. So we created two other floats and they simply receive the input of the mouse X and the input of mouse Y. So these two inputs, we can see them over here. If we go to project settings, input manager, axis. So we have mouse X and mouse Y. We can see that it simply checks the movement on the X axis. And here it checks the movement on the Y axis. That's it. So it checks if the mouse moves like that on the X axis or like that on the Y axis. So here it will just get this value. So for example, we move the mouse up, it will be one or two or three or four. And then it will take this value and store it inside mouse X. But we also want to control the speed of it because if we're going to just get the input, it will be very slow. We want to multiply it by some kind of sensitivity. That's why we have this float here. So we're multiplying the input by the mouse sensitivity, which is 100. As I told you, this is still low, so we need to make it bigger later on. But still, we're going to multiply it by the sensitivity. And then we're also going to multiply it by time delta time. So again, if we hover over it, the completion time in seconds since the last frame. So we're using this so there won't be any difference between a game that runs on 60 FPS or 30 FPS because we want to make it consistent. We don't want to get different inputs depending on different frame rates, right? Because the update method runs every frame. So if you're playing on a game that runs 30 FPS, it means that you're going to run this code 30 times per second. So if the mouse went like plus one, in one second it would be plus 30. But if you're going to play on 60 FPS, it will be plus 60 in one second. So it means you're going to move faster on a higher frame game. So we don't want this to happen. We want it to be consistent. So that's why we're going to multiply it by time, delta time. So time is just the class and the delta time is the method inside of it. And we're going to receive both of these floats. We're going to get all of this information. And then we're simply going to change our X rotation and Y rotation according to this input. Okay. So in order to receive the X rotation, the degrees we want to rotate around the X rotation, we need to do minus equals mouse Y. Because if we move up, for example, on the mouse Y, right? Mouse Y is up and down. So if we move up, it will be one, it will be something positive, but we want the X rotation to go the other way around, right? We don't want it to go also up because if we go with our mouse up, we want the rotation to be negative. You can see here that it goes to minus the X rotation. It goes, it's negative. And if we go down with the mouse, it's positive. So it needs to be opposite. Right? If we are positive on the mouse Y, we need to be negative on the X rotation. That's why we're doing minus equals. If we were to do plus equals, then it would be invert. Then we would move the mouse up, but the player would look down. And maybe if we're playing like a flight simulator or something, then yes, maybe we want that. We want to move our mouse up so the 
camera will go down or something like that, but not in this case. That's why we're doing minus because we want to invert the values, okay? And we're doing the same thing with the Y rotation because when we move the mouse left and right, we want it to rotate around the Y axis. So we want to change it and make it the other way around. So we're going to get both of these amount of degrees inside these floats and we're going to place them inside this equation. So we have this transform. Again, this transform is the transform we're talking about right now. The transform that this script is on, right? Because this script is on this transform, the transform of the player. So here, when we say this transform, we're referring to the transform of the player, right? So then we're going to use the local rotation, the rotation of the transform relative to the transform rotation of the parent, okay? So that's the parent, so it doesn't matter, but it is this transform. And then we're going to provide it all of these rotations. So the quaternion is just a class that works with rotations. Quaternions are used to represent rotations. And the Euler is the one that deals with this X, Y, and Z, okay? So we're going to provide this X rotation, this Y rotation, and the Z rotation, but in our case, we don't need a Z rotation because we don't need to go sideways, right? We need to go on the X axis and Y axis. We don't need to go like in a diagonal rotation. So we're providing this value and we're providing this value. So these are the degrees we want to rotate. And then it takes all of this and it just rotates the transform every frame according to our input. So if I'm moving to the right with the mouse, it checks that every frame, so it gets this information, it gets here, and it goes here, and then it goes here, and then it moves our transform. So it happens every frame, okay? And what we're doing here is simply clamping the rotation on the x-axis. So when we're moving on the x-axis, like in real life, you can look up, but you can't look over. You're not an owl, right? You can't just, I mean, an owl can't do that, but you can't, unless you have a very flexible body, you can't just look backwards like that. You don't have eyes on your back. You can just look up maybe 90 degrees. So you can see here, we reached minus 90 degrees. Yes? And the same way when we look down, we can just look to our feet. So it's 90 degrees, it's almost 90 degrees. We can't just go and look like that between our legs. I mean, again, if you're flexible, but we don't want this in our game. So we want to prevent the player from actually looking too much up and too much down. We want to stop him. We want to say, if you reach minus 90 degrees, on the x-axis you will stop right 90 degrees and if you reach positive 90 degrees on the x-axis you will stop so we want to clamp it we want to just prevent it so that's why we're doing it here we're first of all we're getting the y input and we're placing it inside the x rotation but then we're changing the value in the X rotation and we're saying mat F. So that's the class that is used to deal with all kinds of mathematical equations. And then clamp, you can see clamps the given value between the given minimum float and the maximum float. Okay. And also says here float min and float max and the value. So we provide the same X rotation. And then we say this is the minimum value. And this is the maximum value, because as we said, we don't want to go less than minus 90 and we don't want to go more than 90, than positive 90, right? We don't want to be over flexible. Again, in your game, if you're creating a game about an owl, maybe you do want to change these values. But 
we are dealing with human beings so we don't want this so that's why we're clamping it okay and then after we're doing this equation it goes here and it just changes the value so for example if here we got 95 degrees it would go inside 95 and then it goes here and then checks okay so it's 95 and we don't want to go over 90 so it will just go back to 90 right it will just decrease it back to 90 and then it will change it back to 90 and then it goes here and it actually does the rotation so here we're actually executing the rotation so that's this code it looks a bit uh, hard but when you understand what is going on it's pretty simple okay so that's just the movement with the mouse of course later on we're going to have much more movement with the mouse we're going to have different things so we are going to add more code into this script but for now we only have this looking around so right now it actually works right if we go inside and we play we can actually look sideways we can look up and down you can see that the sensitivity is pretty low i don't like it like that so i need to make it higher but if i'm going to look up you can see that i can't go more than 90 degrees i'm trying i'm pulling my mouse but i can't look up and the same thing here if i'm going to look down i can't go further because we use that clamp we could also do the same thing for the sideways but there's no point to actually clamp our sides because we want to move around we don't want to clamp it right maybe if it was like a, a surveillance camera that was stationary and we want to clamp the degree it could actually move so we don't want it to move further than 90 or 45 degrees then we can use it on a camera but that's a human being so we want to move okay we want to look around so that's for the mouse movement okay and again we can also change the sensitivity for example 200 and then it will be much smoother and i like this way better but again it depends on your uh, pc sometimes there's a difference between all kinds of units i don't know why but you just need to check it for yourself okay that's why usually in games in the option section they have an option to change the sensitivity because different systems will respond differently depending on the sensitivity so we can take this variable and actually put it in the option section of the game so the player can actually adjust it the way he wants okay but for now we don't need to change it because it's fine okay so the next thing we want to deal with is the player movement script so this script will move the player around we are going to be able to jump and eventually when we're going to have for example stairs we're also going to be able to go up that's why we have this step offset so if we're going to increase it we can actually go up higher stairs without jumping we can just walk to them and go over them without jumping or for example we have some kind of a hill so if this value will be very low maybe we won't be able to actually climb that hill so we need to play with the offset okay so i'm going to place it somewhere around seven although right now we don't have any steps to actually go on and we also have the slope so that's the 45 degrees but 45 is i think it's pretty good for a human being again we're going to play with that later on so let's go into the player movement script in the player movement script we have a little bit more information but again there's nothing crazy over there so we have a float that is our speed we have a float that is our gravity and we have a float that is our jump height okay so the speed will be 12 by default the jump height will be 3 by default and the gravity will be minus 9.82 times 2 so the minus 9.81 it's because 
that resembles the real life gravity, right? And I just multiplied it by two because it was a bit slow. So again, you can always change this and actually get your desired gravity if you feel like you're falling too slow or maybe you're too bouncy like you're on the moon or something you can always change that but that's public so you can always test that okay then we have a transform that is called ground check so we didn't create that transform yet let's create it and i'm going to explain to you why we need that transform so inside our player let's create an empty object and let's call it ground check and then we're going to drag it inside this reference, the ground check reference. So it looks for a transform. So let's just drag it inside. Okay. So now we have the reference attached and we're going to use this ground check to actually check if we're standing on the ground, because when we're going to want to jump, we need to check if we're actually standing on the ground because we don't want to jump and be in the air and then jump again, right? Then the player will be able to jump multiple times. We only want him to jump when he's actually standing on the ground. So that's why we need this transform. Then we also have another float that is the ground distance. So that's basically a value that we can check Let's take this ground check. Let's take our player, move it a little bit up, take the ground check and the ground check needs to be at the bottom of our player because we're going to check if a ground is present. So it needs to be close to the ground. And this value here, this ground distance is the value. What is the distance between the ground check and the ground? Okay, so if we're going to set something high, then we can actually be over here and it will still detect. So this ground distance is kind of a radius of the checking. Okay, so it sends like some kind of area around this ground check and it checks if there's something inside this area. So by keeping it low like that, 0.4, it means that we're actually going to have to stand on it, right? Because if it was something higher, like five, then we could actually be in the air and it will still detect the ground because there's no distance between it, right? So that's why we want this to be four, but again, we can always change it depending on your own game. And then we created a layer mask that we called ground mask because we want to actually detect a certain layer when we're doing this ground check. But I'm going to explain to you exactly what and how we're doing it. Then there's also a vector tree, which is the velocity. So the velocity is the velocity of our fall. Okay. It's not the, it's not related to anything else. It's the velocity of our fall. And there's a bull that checks if we're actually grounded or not. Okay. So we don't have a start method right now. Uh, later on, maybe we're going to have one, but right now we only have this update method. So first of all, we are checking if we're actually grounded. Okay. So is grounded. And then it checks if there's actually something inside this ground check. So we're using the physics class and then there's a method called check sphere. So check sphere actually sends, like I told you, some kind of sphere from this ground check and it checks if there's something inside of this sphere. So we can see here, I don't know why there is no explanation, but we're just providing the data for this check. Okay. We're providing the position of our ground check. Okay. So the ground check is this transform. So we're telling it, okay, it's over here in the world. Okay. So each frame, it will check where this ground check is in the world, right? Because it's in the update method. 
and then we're providing the ground distance so we're saying okay the sphere will be the size of the ground distance so that will be the size of the sphere and then there's the ground mask so i've provided a little uh, piece of art here again i'm not an artist but you can see that here we have our ground check okay and we have the entire cylinder we have the ground check and then we have this sphere that comes out so the ground distance will be the size of the sphere okay and it checks if there's something inside of the sphere so we're checking for a ground mask we're checking if there is a layer inside of this sphere so if we are actually interacting with this layer it means that we're actually on the ground so all of this will become positive it will become true and then is grounded will become true okay so the thing we're doing here is actually resetting the velocity because if we're going to jump for example jump in the air and then we're going to fall down the velocity will become faster and faster and then even if we land on something and then we jump again the next time we're going to fall even faster because we're not resetting the velocity so even though we did fell on the ground it was just because the ground stopped us it's not because we actually stopped falling right we fell on the ground and then the ground stopped us but if there was no ground we would keep falling so then when we jump again we will still fall even faster so here we're checking if the velocity actually is smaller than zero then we're going to reset it to minus two okay so minus two it's because we really want to check that it's slow and it doesn't go up or something like that so it's not a uh, building up on velocity but again you can play with these values and then again we're getting these inputs for the horizontal and vertical axis so we can find that in the input project settings input manager horizontal and vertical so horizontal it's either a or d on our keyboard there's also uh, all kinds of settings for joysticks but it checks if we're pressing left or right on the keyboard or a or d and on the vertical it checks if we're pressing up and down or uh, down or up or s and w okay so it checks if we're actually pressing one of these keys okay so if we're going to press something on the horizontal axis for example a or d left or right it will go inside of this float so basically it checks if we're going to the left or to the right that's it so if the value is minus one or one and then again it checks the same thing on the vertical axis if it's minus one or one if we're going up or down okay so actually not up and down but forward or backwards so it gets these inputs inside and stores them inside the float and the set and you can see that it's stored inside z because it's not a top-down game we're not going up on the y-axis we're going forward on the z-axis right and again this is just the name of the float but it's good to actually put x and z because we need to understand that we're going on the z-axis so now we can finally take these inputs and place them inside this vector tree which is move okay so it checks the direction of the x-axis okay because as i wrote down here right is the red axis okay and forward is the blue axis so we're multiplying the x value by the red axis so even if it will be minus one or one even if we're going left or right it will multiply it by the red axis so it will know where to move and the red axis is this axis so it will know 
whether to go left or right. And you can see the blue one, it checks if it goes forwards or backwards. Okay, so it will simply multiply the value that is gotten from the input by this axis. So it says right, but it says that the red axis, you can see if we're hovering over it, the red axis of the transform in the world space. So right, it doesn't mean only right, it means right or left, because right is this red axis. So it's this red axis, left or right. And then the same thing here, forward, normalized vector of the blue axis. So it's this blue axis. If we're going forward or backward, you can see inside the game, forward or backward. So it simply checks the input. It checks if it's minus one or plus one and it stores it inside and then it multiplies it by the direction if we want to go right or left and it does the same thing with the Z axis and stores all of this information inside the move vector. So remember it does that every frame and the update method. So it just checks what is the direction right now in this frame. And then we're simply going to take the controller. So we can see that this controller is actually the character controller that we created here. I think I skipped it, but this character controller is the one that we have on our player. So we also need to drag it inside the controller. So there will be a reference. Okay. And then we're simply taking this controller and we're setting a move method inside a move function. And we're saying move. Okay. Let's supplies the movement of a game object with an attached character controller component. So it's very easy when you actually read what it does. So we're supplying and then here it says supply it with a vector. So we need to supply a vector. So we're supplying this move vector inside, but we're also going to multiply it by a speed because we want to control the speed because we don't want to move very slowly. If we get here minus one or one, we're going to move very slowly. So we want to multiply it by a certain amount of speed. And then again, because we want it to be consistent with our frames, we're going to multiply it by time dot delta time and all of it will be the exact movement that we want. So it will move the controller and it means that it will move the actual player because the controller component is on the player. So if we press play, what's going on? Oh, I think I moved the camera a bit. Yeah, I moved the camera instead of the ground check. Let's place it here. So the ground check needs to be at the bottom and the camera needs to be up top. So now let's press play and we can actually move around. So I'm pressing W, I'm pressing S, I'm pressing A, I'm pressing D, and we can also use the mouse look to actually rotate and move around. And that's cool. But for now, we can jump. So I'm pressing the space key, which is usually the default key for jump in Unity, but nothing happens. So we need to also deal with the jump. So that's why we have this thing here. Okay. So here we check if the input, the key that we're pressing is the jump. So again, let's go here into inputs. So let's see what is the jump. The jump is space. You can always change that, but that's the default. So the space key is the jump. So if we're pressing on space and we're grounded, so if we're actually standing on the ground and all of this check here returns true, then we can actually jump. And then we're doing a kind of a complicated equation here, but this equation is the way to actually calculate 
the jump. Okay? So we're saying that the velocity of y will be mat f. Again, we're dealing with a math equation, square root. Okay? And then we're taking the jump height, which is here, multiplied by minus 2, and then multiplied by gravity. So again, you don't need to understand exactly what is going on here because that's a mathematical equation. And unless you're an engineer or something and you really want to go into it or something like that. But that's the equation for the jump. So you just do that and you place it inside the velocity, the y velocity, right? And then we're also adding the gravity times delta time, again, because we want it to be consistent with our frames, and we're adding that to our velocity y, and then all of that, all of this velocity that we built up here, we're putting it inside our controller the same way we did here, but this time we're providing the velocity and again we need to multiply it by delta time because that's part of the equation we need to double it two times because that's the equation of the jump again if you want to go and read about it and uh, understand what happens here exactly you can do that but again as i told you i'm not going to go into that it's just a mathematical equation for jumping it has something to do with physics so that's the way you do it and then we're just setting it inside the controller so then each time we press the jump and we're actually standing on the ground it will jump that's it so now let's uh, everything is saved let's go back here and the reason it won't work right now is because it checks for a layer but we didn't assign a layer right we want to actually assign a layer to this terrain or, for example, we're going to have some kind of platform, so we want to assign the layer to that platform because it doesn't really know. It checks for a layer, right? Here, we said ground mask, and here, it checks for a ground mask. So we didn't assign a ground mask yet. That's why we need to assign a layer to this terrain. So we're going to go here to the layers. We're going to add another layer, which is ground. And then we're going to change this layer to ground. And here we need to change what is actually the layer we're looking for. So we're going to change that to ground. Okay, so it looks for a ground layer. And the second it will actually stand or find a ground layer and it will actually see that it's inside of it, that the sphere is touching this ground layer, then it will know that it's actually on the ground, so it is grounded, okay? So right now that's the ground and it's the ground layer. If we're going to have platforms or, for example, stairs, we also need to change that to the ground layer, otherwise it won't know that it's on the ground, okay? So let's save, and now we can move, now we can jump, and you can see that it lands a little bit slower. Maybe we want to change that later, but I think it's pretty fine. But right now, we finally have a fully operational movement script and looking script. You can look at the sun, you can move around. Later on, we can add more things to these scripts. We can add, for example, running, right? Uh, we can add uh, other things. But for now, we have this and that's enough. So that's all for this episode. We did a lot in this episode. We actually made the player move around and look around and that's cool. So we saw that there's nothing very complicated here. If you don't understand something, you just go over it and play around with it. Uh, but that's the way we're going to move our character. The next episode, we're going to create some environment. Although it's not that important and it's not related to the logic or the coding of the game, but we do want to feel like we're somewhere, okay? So because it's a survival game, 
we are going to find ourselves in a forest or some kind of uh, nature landscape. So we're going to create and I'm going to show you how we can change this terrain into something that looks really like nature. We're going to have some grass and some trees and it will be fun. So please join me in the next episode. Subscribe if you're still not subscribed. That way you can actually see the second the next episode will come out and it will really help me. I will really appreciate that. So thank you for watching and see you next time.